Hey all you action figure enthusiasts out there, JC here with another TNI news video. And we've got a lot to talk about today, so let's hop right into it. Now first thing, I want to update you on everything that's been going on this week with Toys R Us. I did a video last week talking about this, but a lot's happened since then, so I just kind of want to bring you up to date with everything. Now before we hop into that though, I just want to say, you know, now that it's kind of become a reality that Toys R Us stores are in fact going to be closing, um, one of the worst things about something like this is the job loss. You know, even if you don't like Toys R Us or what have you, you know, the number of people that are going to be laid off from this is is very large. And so I just want to say, and it kind of goes without saying, but I just want to say that, you know, if you're watching this video and you work for Toys R Us, that my thoughts and prayers go out to you, that I'm very sorry that this has happened, that you know, you're gonna be losing your job. Um, I, hopefully, I mean, reports indicate that the job market has gotten stronger in the past year or so. And so hopefully this will lead to bigger and better things. You know, you'll be able to find a, a new job fairly quickly, you know, hopefully something better. Um, it pays more, you know, something along those lines. So hopefully it'll end up being a good opportunity for you, but definitely, you know, there's no candy coating it. It just sucks when you lose your job, especially under circumstances like this. And so I just want to say that, that, you know, my thoughts and prayers go out to you. Okay. So now what exactly is, is happened? So I'm going to, a lot has happened and there's still a lot that's not entirely clear. So, and there's been a lot of confusion because of this and everything, a lot of misleading headlines that have been flying around the past several days. And so I just, I want to start kind of in the beginning of the week and kind of go down the timeline of, of the events as, as they happen. So the first thing that happened was on Wednesday morning, it was announced that the, the Toys R Us store is in the UK and there's about uh, 100 stores in the UK currently. All of those will be closing down within the next six weeks. And that's going to result in somewhere in the neighborhood of around 3,000 people being laid off from their jobs. After that, it was announced that the Toys R Us stores here in the United States were likely to follow suit and would be closing all of their stores. We then started to see headlines saying for fact that all the stores here in the United States would be closing. Um, and this is where a lot of the confusion has come in. So what in fact has happened is late Wednesday, Toys R Us basically went out and requested permission from the bankruptcy courts to begin the process to liquidate all 735 of their Toys R Us stores here in the United States, which basically means all, all the Toys R Us stores would be shoot, uh, shutting down. That's where we then started to see all the headlines about Toys R Us is done, they're, they're closing all their stores and everything. Now, where this is where it gets a little confusing. While that was happening, there was basically a, a toy company, a toy manufacturer by the name of MGA Entertainment. I, I believe they're known for making Bratz dolls, if I'm not mistaken. But this, uh, the CEO of this company basically uh, put together a group of folks who put in a bid to try and purchase the Canadian division of Toys R Us. I, I talked about this a little bit last week about how, you know, Toys R Us is in different countries are kind of broken up into different divisions. And so the division in Canada, which is a separate from the United States, is actually a much healthier uh, branch of the company. It wasn't saddled with all the debt from the leveraged buyout like the American Toys R Us stores were. And so it's much more lucrative and attractive to a prospective buyer. And so um, the CEO of MG Entertainment, who basically feels that it would be disastrous if Toys R Us stores went completely away, um, got this group together and they put this bid in to buy the Canadian division of Toys R Us, as well as looking to try and buy 200 of the best performing stores here in the United States. So essentially, and we, I don't know what those 200 stores are, but um, basically, those 200 stores, if this all happens, would then become part of the Canadian division of Toys R Us. So the stores, I mean, for all intents and purposes, would continue to operate under the Toys R Us name here in the United States. But, but technically, it would now be part of the Canadian division. Now, the thing to keep in mind, if that happens, basically, it means that, that 200 stores here in this country will remain open, despite what's going on with all the other stores and, and, and Toys R Us in New Jersey and everything. Those stores would remain open, and the Canadian stores will, will remain open. Now, if this does
doesn't go through, though, and, and at this time we don't know. We know a bid has been made, but we have not heard anything on whether the bid was made successfully or not and accepted by the courts and everything. Um, and that's what we're basically waiting on now. Um, it, that could come, that decision could come at any time. It's late enough on Friday that it's probably not going to be today, probably not going to hear anything until probably next week at the earliest. But again, this is a very fluid situation. So, um, you know, something could change possibly even by the time I actually get this video uploaded. So the best thing I can recommend as far as keeping on top of that is just keep checking Toy News International. We will update there as soon as it happens of the deal. Now, as I understand it, if this deal does not go through, though, um, Toys R Us stores will, in fact, all be closing, including the Canadian ones. Despite uh, a statement that the Canadian Toys R Us issued that it's business as usual, uh, from what I understand, based on what I read in the press release put out by the Toys R Us here in the United States, them staying open is contingent on the sale going through Um so, you know, it's easily, even though they issued a statement this week, I, I guess to alleviate any panic for people running in to, you know, cash out their, their gift cards or what have you, um, you know, they could easily come back next week and say that, that they're shutting down. So I, I won't swear 100%. I'm not a lawyer. I, I don't, and I'm only going by what's in the press release, but, but I'm, but I'm pretty sure that if, if this deal doesn't go through, um, the Canadian Toys R Us stores would in fact close just as well as the ones, all the ones here in the United States. Now, what else do we know? We know that Toys R Us has said that they will honor all gift cards for both Toys R Us and Babies R Us stores for the next 30 days. So that's as of Thursday, they said they would honor the gift cards that have been issued for the next 30 days. So if you have a gift card, if you've been sitting on one for either the Babies R Us or Toys R Us stores since the holidays or something, I would definitely recommend that you go out and use it now. What does it mean uh, for job losses? So as I mentioned, um, in the UK, they're looking at somewhere in the neighborhood of 3,000 people being laid off. Here in the United States, it's said that if all the stores end up closing, it'll be somewhere in the neighborhood of 33,000 uh, people laid off, which will be the largest mass retail layoff since Circuit City closed its doors back in, I think, 2015. And I believe it's been said that it's the 12th largest since 1993. So definitely it's no small thing. There's going to be a lot of people losing their jobs, as I mentioned before, which is probably the worst thing about this whole thing. Now, it's also been said that Toys R Us is not going to be uh, paying out any severance packages to the people who are being laid off, which I wouldn't necessarily expect at least not for you know the people working in the stores, maybe for the executives, but I wouldn't really expect uh, severance packages. Um, I guess it is somewhat uh, standard that a lot of times when you have mass layoffs like this that a severance package is offered, but it is not required under bankruptcy laws, and Toys R Us has said that they are not going to be paying out any uh, severance packages. Which kind of sucks when you think about back in December, it was announced that Toys R Us won the approval from the bankruptcy courts that they could pay out $16 million in bonuses to their 17 top executives. Um, you know, it definitely kind of sucks that, that they're not doing any kind of severance packages for the people being laid off now. Um, definitely that, that's not cool at all, but unfortunately that's how it goes in the corporate world. What else can we expect? So uh, clearance sales. Um, I've read that basically we can expect now some stores that were announced to close back earlier in the year. You know, originally it was announced that like somewhere in the neighborhood of 180 to 200 stores would be closing. Those stores had already started their, their closing going out of business sales. But for everybody else, you can probably expect to start seeing clearance sales within the next week or so. I don't think it's going to be, you know, it's not going to be like today or tomorrow, but probably within the next week or two, you'll start seeing those sales go up at, at, at the actual stores. Employees were told um, by the CEO that they can expect to be paid for the next 60 days, which I actually think is required by, by law that they have to do that. Um, but basically, um, if you are currently working at Toys R Us, and I'm sure you've probably already been informed of this internally, but, but it looks like you will be continued to be paid within, uh, for the next 60 days and which is pretty much how long we can expect the, the remaining Toys R Us is to stay open, I guess, um, is essentially two months.
Now, besides Canada, there's been indications that other uh, markets, other international markets, such as the Asian markets, Toys R Us is in the Asian markets, may continue to operate as well. Like Canada, they issued uh, those stores, I believe, issued a statement saying that, that it would be business as usual. Again, I think it's probably um, pending, you know, that they actually get sold off to somebody. But like with the Canadian division, those uh, those stores are much more attractive. They don't have the, the huge amounts of debt underneath them like, like the U.S. Toys R Us stores do. And so there's a good chance that, you know, they'll be able to find a prospective buyer. So in the end, it does not look like that the Toys R Us name will go away completely. Okay, now another big question that I've been getting a lot from you guys, and I still unfortunately don't have a definitive answer. I've tried reaching out to Hasbro a few times about this, but what's going to happen with all the Toys R Us exclusives? Primarily, you guys have been asking about the Marvel Legend ones, and again, I don't have a definitive answer. Um, Hasbro has said, you know, responded to me saying that it's on their radar and they'll get me something as soon as they have it. My guess is until, you know, that everything is finalized. I, I feel very confident that all the exclusives that were announced at like Toy Fair that have yet to be released will eventually see a release somewhere, somehow. But until Toys R Us, you know, or until Hasbro actually, you know, gets everything finalized, finds a, finds a different place to actually release it or, you know, what have you through another retailer, you know, they're probably not going to actually comment on this, um, even to say, yes, they're going to be released because they're not going to say something until they know 100% that, 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 it, that it's a done deal, essentially. So, and I don't know how long that'll take, um, you know, it could take days, it could take weeks even, so... Um, and as soon as I get something from Hasbro, I'll be sure to let you guys know. But, you know, already on the website, those of you who had pre-ordered, like, the MCU 10th Anniversary Marvel Legend figures have already started to get cancellations from Toys R Us about those not, you know, coming. Which, obviously, the ones that are released everywhere, the Cap and Crossbones 2-pack and the Iron Man figure, you know, you can just go and, and pre-order them somewhere else. But, but like, the Toys R Us 3-pack, which is an exclusive with the with the Mandarin figure and the, the uh, Pepper Potts and the Iron Man figure. That one, I don't know. Again, I suspect it will eventually get released, but we'll have to wait and see how and where. Now, even if the deal happens to keep the Canadian Toys R Us stores open and the 200 stores here in the United States, I would not just necessarily assume that that means that those exclusives will then get released through those stores. The thing you want to keep in mind, and I don't know, this is just my speculation, but the thing to keep in mind is from what I have uh, seen reported, uh, Toys R Us currently owes Hasbro in the neighborhood of $59 million in debt, unpaid debt. And companies like Mattel, I've seen figures that range in the neighborhood of $135 million in unpaid debt that they owe, owe Mattel. So even if you know a deal has worked out and everything and some of these stores continue to operate, there are still going to be tremendous amounts of money lost by these companies. And take that plus the fact that if there's only 200 stores left instead of 800 here in the United States and you know the 80 stores in Canada, 82 or whatever, then, you know, that's far less options for people to be able to go in and buy these exclusives. So it may very well be that, you know, even if there is a remnant of Toys R Us that survives this, companies like Hasbro and Mattel may not want to continue to work with them, at least in regards to doing exclusives with them. So, um, like I said, even if we get news that the deal goes through uh, to keep those stores open, I would not necessarily assume that that means those stores will still get the previously announced Toys R Us exclusives. They might. Uh, again, we'll just have to wait and see, but I wouldn't just make the assumption that they will. Now, the website itself it is still currently operating, and I've been told, I haven't gotten this officially confirmed, but I've been told that we can expect shipments to continue to coming out from the warehouse uh, for products on the website for the next two weeks. So if you see something on there that you want to buy that's currently in stock, you know, 
I would probably you should be okay and they should probably still ship it out to you now worst case if you order something and and they're not able to fulfill it they you know will refund your money uh, I'm assuming so I don't think you have to worry about them taking your money and, and disappearing but but again um, probably at least for the next week or so you can still buy stuff on the website I mean it's it's your decision I'm, I'm not gonna sit here and say 100% that something funky is not gonna happen but but from what I'm told you know you still should be able to make purchases off the website. Now, what's going to happen to the website long run? I don't know. That's essentially kind of a whole different division, kind of like the Canadian division and everything. So somebody, as I understand it, would actually have to buy the website. And I guess conceivably somebody could buy the website and none of the physical stores if they wanted to and continue to operate it. Um, so that's a possibility as well. I, I don't know, I haven't heard anything specifically about the websites being involved with the MGA bid, but it may. So again, that's something we'll just kind of have to wait and see how that plays out. Also, I wanted to let you guys know that um, NECA Toys, so some of you have been wondering like what's gonna happen to smaller companies like NECA Toys, because you know they sell a lot of product at Toys R Us. And certainly Toys R Us closing is not going to be a good thing for them, but um, I was told by NECA that they are going to be selling, currently hitting shelves now at Target and Best Buy is their new God of War Kratos figure. And also being sold at Best Buy and Target will be the upcoming Crash Bandicoot figures. And while nothing's guaranteed, if those figures were to sell well, there's a good chance that places like Target and and Best Buy would be interested in expanding their relationship with NECA and carrying more of their products. So, you know, if you're worried about a NECA toys and how they're gonna survive after, you know, Toys R Us going under and everything, then definitely you might wanna look to support them at these other uh, retailers that they're starting to kind of get their foot in the door with. So that pretty much brings us to where we are now, at least as I'm filming this. Like I said, things could change at any time, but essentially we're waiting to hear what's gonna happen with that deal if MGA is going to be successful in buying the Canadian Toys R Us's along with the 200 stores here in the United States. And if they do, then we will at least see some Toys R Us's continue to operate here past the, the next couple of weeks. Okay, so let's move on to a couple things that are a little less depressing. Um, so first of all, I wanted to let you guys know that Diamond Select Toys is going to be doing an unmasked Spider-Man Homecoming Marvel Select Tom Holland figure. So if you wanted that figure with the unmasked head, it is going to be offered as a Disney Store exclusive. The figure is currently available on the Disney Shop UK website. And I have been told that it will be made available eventually. I don't have a release date, but eventually it will be made available here in the United States as well. Now, this is pretty much the exact same figure we got before, only instead of getting the masked head, you get the unmasked Tom Holland head. And again, that will be a Disney Store exclusive. We also got a look at Hasbro's upcoming 6-inch Marvel Avengers Infinity War basic figure this is part of the hero vision line so the basic articulation everything but um no word on whether we're going to ever see a, a version of this armor for the marvel legend line but we are getting a look at the hero vision version now speaking of avengers infinity war the other big news today was the debut of the new trailer as well as the official movie poster so if you haven't i'm sure you've probably seen the trailer already i loved it i thought it was great you know, we had a flashback scene with Thanos, um, with Gamora, and Thanos is wearing his armor. I don't think he's probably wearing the armor in, in the, you know, current day uh, time period, but looks like, you know, we will see him in the armor in, in the flashback scene. He might put the armor on at some point, but at this point it's looking like the armor's just going to appear in the flashback scene. Uh, we got Cap taking on Thanos and seemingly holding his own to Thanos' surprise, which was awesome. We've got, you know, Stark and the Guardians of the Galaxy getting together, and that's a pretty funny scene. And then I love the scene at the end of the trailer where you've got Spider-Man introducing himself to Doctor Strange, and he's like... I'm Peter and, and Strange, which is, you know, his real name is Strange. So he's like, I'm Dr. Strange. And he's like, oh, we're using our fake names. Well, then I'm Spider-Man. <laughs> I thought that was pretty funny. But definitely, I, I thought the trailer was good. The poster, poster, it looks like they managed to cram almost everybody on the poster. Of course, none of them are wearing their masks because, you know, they all want their faces shown and everything. That's become pretty standard. Even though in the Civil War poster, like Stark had his helmet off, but the others, Black Panther and Captain America, all had their, their 
their masks on for the Civil War poster. But with this one, everybody's pretty much got their uh, masks off. Um, things to note that people have been pointing out, no sign of Hawkeye, which I don't think we're going to see any sign of Hawkeye in any promotional material. It doesn't mean he's not in the movie, and I'm not saying he is or isn't, but but I, I definitely will say that just because he's not on the poster doesn't mean he's not in the movie. Uh, Ant-Man and the Wasp are not on the poster as well, and while they may make a brief appearance in the movie, I don't think they're going to have a large role in this film. Of course, you know, they've got their movie coming up, you know, a few months after this one, so that's probably why. And then also an uh, important thing to note was um, on the credits, listed on the credits on the poster, was actor Peter Dinklage. So, you know, from Game of Thrones, also was in the Fox X-Men movie, Days of Future Past. And so up until this point, I don't think it had been known he was actually in this movie. I don't know exactly what character he is going to be playing. Some of you on social media have suggested that he would might be playing Pip the Troll, and I don't know if that's the case, but I do think that he would be a perfect fit for that character. So if, if Pip the Troll is going to be in this movie and, you know, he does have ties to Thanos and the Infinity Gauntlet, so it makes sense. I, I think that would be perfect casting for that character, but we'll have to wait and see. I won't say we'll have to wait and see until the movie comes out because it may end up, you know, they may announce who he's playing before then, but, but definitely at this time, I, I don't, you know, I have no idea who's actually going to be playing, but definitely Pip the Troll would be a very good uh, choice for him. So that pretty much wraps it up. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comment section below. Leave a comment. Let me know what you think. If you're so inclined, please like the video. Also, I am going to be, I have come into um, my possession an extra Toys R Us exclusive Marvel Legend 2-pack with the Vision and Scarlet Witch. I am going to be announcing a contest giveaway for that next week, so please be sure to tune in for that. I haven't decided if I'm going to give it away separately, or I might do it with uh, the big Avengers Infinity War box that I opened up last week that I plan on giving away as well. I haven't decided, but definitely stay tuned. I will be uh, revealing details on that uh, very shortly. So like I said, as always, please like the video. Please hit the subscribe button down below if you haven't already. I'm getting real close to 40,000 subscribers, less than 400 to go. You can also follow me on my Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram accounts. It's definitely a good way to keep up with everything that's going on. And until next time, guys, I'll catch you later.